First and four, winter weather advisories posted for the entire area as snow is knocking on our back door. We'll find out how much to expect for tomorrow's morning drive. Karen? Also first and four, a little boy is shot while playing with a gun. That little boy is just four years old. We'll have an update on his condition and the investigation. The state's top medical executive has an update on the new variant of COVID-19. How many cases in Metro Detroit? And how you can be more aggressive in protecting your family. Paula. It's a cold and snowy Michigan Monday. How would you like it if your kid went to class in this classroom? Hmm. We'll talk to the superintendent about this one. Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Good afternoon. That breaking news comes to us from Harrison Township, where deputies are investigating a deadly home invasion. Now, we did just get this video from the scene. Right now, we do know that Macomb County deputies were called to the Harrison Woods condos just after 1230 this afternoon about a home invasion in progress. As they responded, there was a report of gunshots. Once they got to the scene, they found one person dead inside a residence and we have a crew on the scene gathering more information and we'll update you as much as as the information becomes available into our newsroom and of course keep you updated on clickondetroit.com. Also first at four, we knew we couldn't avoid it forever. Now we are in the middle of a one two punch of nastier winter weather. More snow will hit overnight. Meteorologist Ben Bailey working hard to get all of this down and figured out for all of us. We're wondering uh, the timeline on this, Ben. Yeah, Karen, it looks like it's going to really start getting going overnight and the biggest impact is going to be tomorrow morning. But the winter weather advisories do start at 1 a.m. tonight and then they run through 4 o'clock on Tuesday and that is for everybody. Most of this will be snow. You can see that Storm Tracker 4 now seeing two distinct areas, but it's that one out to the west. It's sort of got its fingers into Lake Michigan. That's what's going to get us later tonight. So by 10, 11 o'clock, we'll start seeing snow in the south zone and then that's gradually going to spread to the north overnight and some of the heaviest snowfall will be coming during the morning commute tomorrow. How much are we expecting? Well, the worst of this is going to be well to our west from Chicago back into Iowa, but we're still going to have a healthy amount on top of us as we finish out Tuesday and we'll talk amounts here in just a few minutes. Numbers falling, uh, they will be below freezing the entire time. I do think that most of this will be snow, but there's a slight chance that some of this could be a freezing drizzle uh, burst and we'll talk about the timing on that and the impacts it's going to have in just a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. Local 4 is the only station in town with two meteorologists working overnight to track the snow as it arrives. Join Brandon Rue and Paul Gross starting at 430 AM tomorrow. Now we are following breaking news in the Flint water crisis. Attorneys for former Governor Rick Snyder have filed a motion to dismiss charges against him. In court documents, Snyder's attorney alleges that a Genesee County judge did not have the jurisdiction to approve the indictment since the alleged acts happened in Lansing. Attorneys say since Snyder was in Lansing, the case should be dismissed in Genesee County. Snyder is charged with two misdemeanor counts of willful neglect of duty. Now let's turn our attention to Michigan's battle with COVID-19. Governor Whitmer's team says Michigan is down to 203 cases per million. For perspective, that is a 72% drop from the peak in November. Today, the state is reporting more than 3,000 new cases over the past two days, and we have seen an additional 35 deaths. The governor says Michigan is in the top 10 nationally when it comes to vaccine shots being used. But there is growing concern about that new British variant of the virus with 13 cases in Washtenaw County, four in Wayne. The state's top doctor says the variant is more aggressive and says it's time to give your face mask protection a boost. Take a listen. You want to at least wear a multiple layer cloth mask. Masks that have a single layer are not as protective. You can also wear a KN95 mask or a multiple layer disposable mask. You can also wear a face shield uh, over your mask for additional protection. But please remember that face shields alone without a mask over the mouth and nose are not as protective. So you want to wear both. Now we'll have much more on the new variant and its local impact. New at five, we answer some of the most common questions you have. And then at six, we'll expand on that new face mask advice you just heard from Dr. Caldoun and how it might change your daily routine. A four year old boy is in the hospital right now after police say he accidentally shot himself on the city's west side. This happened at a home on Hubble near Linden around 11 o'clock last night. Police tell us the boy found the gun and shot himself. 
Right now, he's in stable condition. It's not known who the gun belongs to. This is the second shooting involving a child in the last week. Police say an 18-month-old got a hold of a gun and shot and killed his five-year-old cousin. A Wixom man charged with attacking an officer at the U.S. Capitol is back in court today. Prosecutors say Michael Foy repeatedly hit that officer with a hockey stick. Foy was arrested last week at a condo he rented with his brother. In court documents filed over the weekend, prosecutors accused Foy of substance abuse, alleging he was drinking 10 beers a day even the day before he was arrested. Today's hearing will determine if Foy will be released on bond. We'll keep you posted. Now, in just a few hours, former President Trump's second impeachment trial will take another step forward. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi will deliver a single charge against Trump to the U.S. Senate. Local force Kimberly Gill following that. And Kim, the trial won't start right away. It won't, Karen. Good afternoon to you. Much of the process will be ceremonial this week as Senate Democrats and Republicans have agreed to pause the impeachment trial until next month. Here's a look at how this will all play out. House Democrats will carry the sole impeachment charge of incitement of insurrection across the Capitol just before 7 p.m. tonight. President Trump is accused of inciting the siege on the U.S. Capitol on January 6th. The 100 senators will be sworn in as jurors on Tuesday. Then both sides will exchange pre-trial briefs for about two weeks with arguments in the trial to begin the week of February 8th. With a few exceptions, Senate Republicans seem to be rallying against a conviction at this time. Democrats say the extra prep time could help uncover more evidence against the former president. Meanwhile, the Justice Department's Inspector General is launching a new investigation. It's looking into whether any former or current Department of officials engaged in an improper attempt to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election. It follows the New York Times report that a former assistant attorney general discussed a plan with then President Trump to oust the acting attorney general to challenge the election and falsely suggest widespread fraud. So Karen will have much more to come tonight when you join us on the news at five. For now, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. Well, the question, did former President Donald Trump violate the Constitution by profiting from his presidency. Now, it looks like that issue will never be decided in court. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court dismissed two lawsuits making that accusation. The claims focused on state and foreign officials who paid to stay in Trump hotels in New York and D.C. The high court ruled the suits are now moot since Trump is no longer in office. The outcome leaves no judicial opinions on the Constitution's emollients clause, which has rarely been challenged in American history. Closer to home, more COVID creativity in action. The push for school safety has led one Macomb County student to expand his thinking about what a classroom could become. Our Paula Dutman takes us on a field trip to see what learning outdoor looks like. Hey, Paula. Hey, Karen. Yeah, you know what? It's Michigan. We're Michiganders. It gets cold outside, right? But how is easy is it to learn outside? So Chippewa Valley Schools, uh, their primary kids went back last week. Today, secondary kids came back for face-to-face, in-person learning, and they're probably going to say to their teachers, hey, what's that over there? As schools try to figure out how to outsmart COVID and get children back to in-person learning, one Macomb County student is already ahead in that game. This is Mohawk Elementary School in the Chippewa Valley School District, and this is the outdoor classroom space designed by 17-year-old Boy Scout and Mohawk alum Nate Lyons. Hopefully, like, when it's a good day, teachers can come out here and, like, for fresh air if kids are feeling cramped or if it's just, I don't know kind of eh, in classrooms, they can come out here and just enjoy fresh air. While the project was an Eagle Scout endeavor, the net net is a viable space for children to learn. So I knew I wanted to do something here just because this is where I spent like my first years of school in the district. I went to middle school just across the street. Uh, so I wanted to give something back to Mohawk. Well, kids love to move to different locations to learn, and I just see this as giving them more variety of, of, of a learning space with the school. But I can see this for reading time. I can see this for science lessons. Nate thoughtfully combined science with creativity to create this space. He and his fellow Boy Scouts and family started constructing in August, and it took about four months to grind out to a finished product. Well, there's 36 seats in total for, for students. There's also the bench for the teacher. My dad made a plan that involved the six feet apart thing that was really easy and nice to work with. Also, we thought it was a good number for a classroom size. Painting and sanding the stumps, putting in the umbrellas, constructing the whiteboard. 
all of that was done by my family. Now, I know what you're saying. This is Michigan. How are you really going to put children in an outdoor open air classroom in the cold of winter? I don't think today is a good day to be out here for our students in that, but I, I think there will be days in February when it gets a little bit warmer and I, I can see it being used for short periods of time during the colder months. And when COVID is finally behind us, this outdoor classroom will remain kind of a school hinge testament to the resilience of us all. Thank you. School hinge. You know, Karen, did you see what I did there? School hinge, stone hinge. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, maybe you just had to be there. Listen, <laughs> here, here's the thing. It's important to say that they're not going to have kids out in the snow and right. the rain when it's freezing out there, but there are opportunities when it's nice outside and you have an open air learning space, particularly in the spring and the summer, Karen. I will say our school cool was hinge. doing that with science classes and my girls really looked forward to that because it was just a little bit of a break, a little bit of fresh air, and they were eager for those yep. classes. So it really is a good concept. I give them credit. Thank you, Paula. Stay Me warm. Too. Stay warm. All right, still ahead. One of Donald Trump's most loyal supporters is now facing a billion dollar lawsuit. We will talk about that legal action coming up next. President Biden is reversing a military ban put in place by his predecessor. Some call the change a win for equality. Now a phone call to Disney World helped a woman who says she was being attacked by her boyfriend. Those stories right after the break.